All right, thanks everybody for uh, uh, for joining us. Hopefully, you're having a great show. Um, I do find it interesting that you, you know, it's fairly spread out. Nobody wants to sit up front, so I put a couple of people there to make it look uh, you know, more efficient. Anyway, um, I'm uh, Mike McQuarrie. I'm with uh, Safeguard Global. You. You probably don't want to hear much from me, so I'm just going to give you an introduction to Nick with uh, Memento Performance Materials, and he's going to walk you through their journey through Workday and then on to Global Payroll. This is a standard safe harbor statement. Read it at your leisure. I'm not going to. I'm not going to read it for you. Go to the next one. All right. So uh, the way that uh, Nick wanted to structure it is to talk about. Um, you know, his company and then also his background because it's important to know where he's been um, and, uh, and what the company does and wh why they started the journey. Then walk through kind of what it was like to deploy Workday, then come back around and do global payroll, uh, et cetera. And then uh, cover uh, a little bit about lessons learned and Q&A at the uh, end of the session. So with that, I'd like you all to give a warm welcome to uh, Nick Madison from uh, MPM. Fantastic. You guys can hear me okay? Thanks, Mike. I know you promised me the keynote, but we'll settle for here. This is a good little start for us. Um, again, my name is, is Nick Madison. I've been a payroll professional now for about 10 years, and uh, really for me, I started working at General Electric, and I had a background in implementations, design work, global uh, deployments in, in a, a variety of different countries. And so I took that experience and, and really was faced with a unique opportunity, right? Approached at Momentum to lead their global payroll, but also do see through this, this large HR transformation because we were standing ourselves up from a sister company um, and really kind of defining our whole HR platform and, and, and workday, right? A big bang opportunity. Uh, to, to deploy payroll, uh, recruiting, performance, talent, comp, advanced comp, really the whole suite there. So, you know, once, one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. But for me, and I, and I just want to kind of give a, a quick story about the, the process for me, and I, I just remember going through the interview process and, you know, we were talking about Workday and my background was traditionally in Oracle products or PeopleSoft products. And my soon-to-be boss came to me and said, well, you know, we're struggling to get the site to, to really take ownership here and really understand what we're trying to do. So we're going to do a road show. And I said, okay, didn't think anything of it. Calls me about a week later and says, you know, got the job and you're going to go out and present about Workday. You're going to go to all, you know, all of our sites. We're going to talk about it. And I'm like, well, I don't know Workday. And he's like, we'll figure it out. We're going to go out and we're going to be experts the next month. So cool experience for me, um, you know, fast forward obviously, you know, many years and, and now I am an expert in this, or as much as you can be an expert uh, in the global payroll scheme. So really cool opportunity for me. Um, again, I lead a team of about 25 people across three regions um, and we're now deployed over, over that in those spaces. So Momentum, as I mentioned, um, you know, 3,400 patents. Uh, we have customers in about 100 countries. Um, 4,000 customers. We are, as, as far as employees are concerned, we are in 28 countries across 36 entities. So pretty diverse in what we do in the performance silicones uh, industry, as well as our, our workforce and, and the people we support. So we've got a pretty big footprint. And, and when we approached this project, we wanted to find a, a partner that would have that same sort of approach or that same sort of footprint for where we were going because we wanted somebody not only that would, would be there with us from the start but would grow with us as we got bigger, we took on new business needs and really started to, to, to evolve as a company as a whole. So as I mentioned, we had this unique opportunity from an HR standpoint where we're gonna deploy Workday. Um, so 
It was really a kind of a, a, a tough situation. We had no common human capital systems. We had 19 different payroll providers across those 28 countries, fragmented HR processes, and really it was just this, this manual mess of work and activities and validations, and, and it was just something that we knew we could fix if we took the right steps and found the right partners. So what we wanted to do really was engage and, and be agile. So we wanted to find those efficiencies, find those processes, and develop something that we could be sustainable both in the US, globally, and otherwise. So from our vantage point, this was the right first step here. So as I mentioned, Workday was our, our choice. And we wanted to do that big bang approach, right? Obviously multiple ways to go about that, but the big bang approach, and we essentially wanted to roll all these, these programs out but also deploy Workday Payroll as our first step because we had so much opportunity in all these regions, but the US was our biggest footprint with about 2,200 people. So we took ADP at the time, our provider, and insourced our US payroll. Um, and, and really the goal there was not only to, to get more visibility, get more kind of reporting and, and hands-on, but to just gain those efficiencies, gain the reporting, gain the metrics, and, and, and build that, that Workday brand and, and Workday kind of self-service experience. So not only, again, we wanted to drive that employee engagement, we wanted to deliver some reporting, but we also wanted to make sure that our executive stakeholders, our leadership group, had what they needed when they needed it. So as I said, we had this, this, this incredible opportunity, this incredible uh, results with our US base. And, and really now we kind of asked ourselves, what about the rest of the world? We have this wild west out here where we have, you know, everybody's doing their own rules. There's no standard approvals. There's no standard set of reporting. So what are we gonna do to get everybody else up to that level that we, we, we drove the US to? So we found Safeguard. And we were focused on the same things they were focused on. We were driving automation, right? I wanted to get rid of Sally down the hall, keying things into an SAP system as well as an ADP system. And we really wanted to sort of deliver something that was automated because when things are automated, it makes life significantly easier because you're not worried about errors, data defects, things like that. So that was number one. Number two was driving that adoption, right? We wanted people to take ownership of their data, self-service, pay slips, uh, tax data, banking elections. We wanted people to really take that because who knows their data better than you, right, is you. So we wanted to push that and really sort of deliver this, this unique experience where you could come into a Workday platform and you could get your performance document, you could get your, your comp statement, you could get your pay slip, you could make your elections, you could do all this here in one shop. Um, and beyond that, this was our opportunity to build upon a future shared services strategy, right? We really wanted to be able to support from a payroll perspective, from an HR perspective, from an employee support perspective. It was kind of our, our way of sort of starting down that path. So now I want to talk a little bit about sort of what life was like without a pay integration versus what life like was with a pay integration. So as I mentioned, we have this data inconsistency and errors. We just had a multitude of issues where people were keying things in. We had people who were disputing hire dates and continuous service dates and just all these different sort of, you know, he said, she said situations. And it just led to issues, late pay. We had, you know, direct deposit issues and it just was nothing good came from it. So we knew this was something we had to fix, clean up and, and really kind of put forth the right, the right foot right away mentioned time consuming manual processes people are keying things in manually people are kind of spending time on activities they shouldn't be spending time on this was we wanted our people to be doing value add work and not necessarily focusing on keying something into a system when it could easily be done from a self-service or it could be done from from a, an automated solution so it was really important for that the low visibility and high amb ambiguity, again, I affectionately refer to it as the Wild West because we just had so much autonomy that it created problems. People were keying in one-time payments. People were coming in and doing and making their own rules and developing their own processes, and there was nothing standard. So this, again, was our opportunity to say, here's the standard offering, here's the standard process, you need to operate in it. Was that well received right from the bat? Absolutely not, but that's part of the change management exercise that's so critical to this, to this delivery. Um, arduous and complex reporting. It's funny, right? My first week I came in and the CFO came over to me and said, I need an overtime report for all of our sites globally. And I'm like, that's easy, we'll get that to you tomorrow. 
took me three weeks to compile all these reports and, and, and really be able to compile it and feel good about it. Because not only are you compiling it, you're checking the data because it's multiple systems, you're synthesizing it, making sure that it's, 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 it's formatted correctly. So it's not just this easy one-click report that you can do, it's this complex gathering of data and it becomes a mini project in itself. And so that was just something we wanted to avoid here going forward. And then employee engagement is just the, the most critical. We wanted those people owning their data. You know, again, that was, that's something I continue to do, I continue to focus on, because we really want you as the employee to be able to go in and, and make those changes, make those updates, and be sort of the true owner of what you do and how we do it. So now talk about the pay integration, and this is the world I want to live in now. I never want to go back to this other world where you have this kind of like, you know, uh, lack of controls and rules. So now we have this efficiency. We have the ability to be able to have people focus on value add work. You're not having people chase people down. You're letting your payroll analysts or your HR solutions analysts or what have you focus on the value work. Maybe it's projects, process improvements. Maybe you're looking proactively about what you can do, a compliance activity, a, a tax code update. You're just being a little bit more kind of forward thinking when it comes to what's gonna happen. Compliance is a big one. I mean, when we first started, I, I felt like the Sox team was at my door every other week asking about what's this, what's that, and you know, I'm having to try to answer these manual processes and how we did it and why we did it, when now it's just as easy as to say, here's our integration, pull the file down, validate the source system, and it's, and it's done, we're compliant. Uh, nimble informed decision making. Again, you want your HR community, your finance community, wherever you land, to be able to focus on the, f the, the important things, make important decisions, have the click of a button and be able to f realize what's happening in their supervisory order, in their cost center, or whatever, the, whatever they need that, at that moment. Uh, again, more efficient HR operations, right? You want your field HR, your other groups, to be able to do the important things, to be able to recruit, to, to talent fill, succession plan, not necessarily worrying about silly things like payroll and the timeliness and bank files and all these, these odd things that you take for granted, but you want them to be able to do that. And then employee engagement rises. As I said, we went from doing almost everything manually to this now self-service platform where people could do what they want when they want you know you didn't have to key it into a system and then worry about an integration doing this that and the other thing it was really just real-time updates to your data so this is this is our timeline right and and for me I, I want to talk a little less about sort of the dates and the deliverables, right? Obviously because it's important because it shows our journey and shows what we did. But for me, this is more about the partnership that we had, right? We, uh, we laid out a, a path or a plan and then we quickly found out that maybe it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. So the partnership with Safeguard to be able to adjust on the fly and make these changes was so critical. Right? We, we, we thought we could load these certain countries into a wave, but then lo and behold that we had resources that were overburdened with activity. So what we did was we were able to be agile, nimble, and make these changes on the fly and really come up with a strategy that was working for both of us. Right? We could come up with very sustainable waves, very sustainable project groups, and come up with solutions that we thought were going to both benefit us as well as safeguard. Beyond that, we, you know, we had a lot of challenges. Again, I won't lie, I won't say that everything went perfect. You know, we had a, a very challenging works council, but one of the things was, is again, having that conversation very candid with, with both Safeguard as well as MPM to say, look, here's what we need when we need it. And you know, they answered and stepped up every single time, able to partner with us, you know, no matter how many crazy requests we had about you know, data security and GDPR and all the like, it was just this unique opportunity for us to be able to say, look, we got this problem and we sat down as a group, a cohesive unit, and we said, here's how we're gonna solve it. So again, this was our blueprint to getting 28 countries across you know, those 5,000 employees. But as I said, it was just, it's less to me about the, the, the delivery and it's more about how we just were able to work together. We were realistic, we were self-aware, and we were able to kind of put forth our best foot to have this delivery um, for, our, for our product. So again, you know, I've touched on all of these activities really, um, but employee engagement was continued to be super important, right? We wanted people in there, we wanted them real time to be able to make those updates. Uh, process efficiencies, we, we didn't want to have to have Hong Kong have a different process than Japan, than Brazil, than Germany. We wanted to be able to use global processes that created efficiencies so we could leverage hubs and we could leverage people to focus and deliver this activity. 
100% green is actually probably the thing I'm most proud of because when we walked into this, we printed everything, pay slips, physical checks, and it was just thousands of dollars for people to look at something, file it away and never look at it again. So as a result of this, with that employee engagement, with that self-service, we just pushed this green initiative and we're able to deliver a 100% green solution. We went from, again, pr printing across the globe to printing nowhere as a result of this. So to me, this was just such a huge win, not only for the obvious, which is the environment, but just, just a huge win for, for sustainability. And then effective controls. Right, obviously from my vantage point as, a, as the owner of payroll, I wanna be able to know what's coming in, what's going out, when it's going in, when it's going out. And so this was our opportunity really to, to see that, create that awareness, build that platform so we could have that ability. So really, again, what did we learn and what would I recommend, right? As I talked about the timeline, just being agile, right? Y you don't know what you don't know is what I said often and we said to each other probably at nauseum, but we just wanted to be able to adapt and change as we develop the process, right? You needed, we needed, wanted a partner that would match our sort of curiosity about discussing different points. We wanted a partner that would work with us when we had challenges. We wanted a partner who could give us recommendations when we didn't know. And so this was sort of that open dialogue, this open forum for us to be able to do so. So this to me was just one of those best practices that I have. And we carried it forward with a lot of our other projects and other implementations, but I thought that was extremely important. And then local expertise, right? We had 28 countries and we don't know everything about every every country you have two people in singapore i don't know enough about singapore tax benefits and statutory elements so recognizing what you don't know and partnering with safeguard to build that knowledge really understand how do we how do we beef up the team's knowledge and and get that information because you can't fake that honestly you you can't fake the knowledge the the tax filing so this, this self-awareness on our end and Safeguard's end to partner with us was so critical for us to be able to deliver this on time and, and really zero defect as much as possible. Uh, and then data. I talked about bringing a lot of stuff into Workday. This was a painful exercise, but absolutely necessary to be successful. When you wanted to bring in tax IDs and demographic information and bank information, you're bringing it from all these different locations or spreadsheets or, or SharePoints or whatever the case may be. You have to make that investment to bring the data in because it's so critical because going forward, Workday was our system of record. And then when somebody came to us and said, why isn't my tax ID in there? Well, we'd say, did you key it in? And it was easy now because we could give a standard set, a standard process and deliver it timely. As I mentioned, it's a lot of work. It's not something that you can do overnight. It's not something you can do in a month. But if you put the investment in, you'll come up with this sustainable approach where now you have sort of systems that speak to each other with an automated integration. There's no more manual, manual touch points. There's just a lot, a lot more efficiencies. There's real-time dashboards, real-time reporting. Um, you know, so it's just something that was well received amongst the, my entire organization. And you know, it, it's a, again, a best practice for us with the, our data analytics reporting and highlighting all the great work and activities that happened. So that's a lot, and again, that's, that's our experience, but I'd love to see if there's any questions or anything I can expand upon more. Um, but we, again, we're, we're really grateful for the partnership and the journey we had along the way with, with Safeguard. It's, oh, it's now working. So there you go. It wasn't working before. That's why I wasn't talking to the mic. Um, yeah. So Nick, you talked a lot about uh, agility, and you know that was largely around the timeline um, of when countries were going to go live. Mm -hmm. And on that slide, in case any of you didn't notice, Germany, you know, went at the tail end of it. You talk a little bit about uh, about that experience and. Um, yeah, that, that was one of those ones where you file it under, I did it once, I don't want to ever do it again, but um, great amount of learning there. We just had so much challenge in the way of, of data requests and in 
you know, the, the German group was so set on their old ways, right? They liked what they liked, the way they liked it. And so we were essentially unearthing and changing years of, of legacy processes and legacy uh, sort of ways of operation. So not only was it, it, was it a change management exercise, but it was an exercise of us just sort of breaking down the walls that they had built on the way they operate. So again, the, the, the challenge was we were bombarded with data requests. We were bombarded with sort of questioning uh, IT security and data integrity and things like that. But once you put logic to the situation, we were able to overcome it and really deliver the quality product at the end there with, with now, I think nine months live and, and, you know, knock on wood, little to no issues at this point. So, you know, it was one of those things where we just had to be very persistent and work our way through it. And, and we eventually got there, thankfully. Do you have any, any questions from the, uh, you know, from the audience? Hi, uh, Key Brooks from ITW. Um, we're an engineering manufacturing firm um, based around the world similar to you guys, about 45,000 global. Could you describe how you got to the decision point of pulling back and saying, we're gonna go with this payroll provider or solution versus uh, one of the top ones in a particular country, such as Germany or anything in that matter? Yeah, so we looked, again, when we went through that ori original exercise, we looked at a, a bunch of different uh, options, right? We looked at independent um, country providers, we looked at regional providers, and what it boiled down to was we couldn't, we didn't want to get to a point where we're like, yeah, we went from 19 to 7. Right? Was it, was that, is that incrementally better? Absolutely, but is that the right answer? No, right? I wanted to be able to go in the system and report on in, in one set of, of data, right? So for example, you know, when my global lead, or uh, my regional leaders are out in LATAM, APAC, or MIA, it's easy now. I can go in and approve payrolls. I don't have to worry about contacting someone in Italy or, or uh, Brazil and have to figure out what do I do to approve it? It's, it's the da same dashboard and I can click them all at the same time if I want. Um, so it's just really that ease of use, that reporting, and then going forward, we're looking not at just reactionary reporting now, we're looking at trending, we're looking at how do you sort of forecast payroll, how do you sort of show headcount variations, things like that. So for me it was the one-stop shop mentality, because we not only did, and I didn't mention this, but not only did we do a safeguard implementation, we did a global time and attendance implementation that preceded safeguard. So I really wanted one answer, one global solution for all of our products. So that was that was sort of our methodology when we approached that. Any uh, any other questions? Got to be one or two. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Mariana. I'm from the IRC, International Rescue Committee. It's a nonprofit for refugees as well. well Can you look closer? And my question is: Did you had another HRIS before? Workday, and how was that changed from whatever you had? Yeah, so we we used SAP before that, and it was a essentially rather than coming up with consistent processes, what we did was threw manpower at it. So if you had a, a, a high a org change for cost center or a hierarchy change, we just threw people at it, and we keyed it in, um, and so that's what I was saying about manual entry here, manual entry there. It was just this sort of very challenging process, and so now and again, this is a change. We're, we're five years in our journey with, with Workday, and we still have people that resist the, the ownership of keying in a compensation change or um, making an org change or a cost center change or things like that, but now it truly is that ownership at that level. But before that, it really truly was just a put, put our people on there, key them in, have them submit emails or you know paper forms, I won't say that too loud, but uh, you know, we really had everything there that we, you know, we try to avoid now. I think I see somebody who has a question. So my question is, you uh, mentioned that you implemented a global time and attendance system prior to implementing Safeguard. Um, if I may ask, what is the global time and attendance system that you implemented and then is it integrated 
into Workday that then flows to Safeguard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's Replicon, and you know, with with we operate now, everything's integrated. So we have a, a closed loop between Workday, Replicon, and Safeguard. So Workday obviously sends demographic information to a multiple places, but it sends it to Replicon where we conduct our time and attendance, which then sends a payroll work work file every single month. So it's all automated solutions because what we wanted to get away from, from a SOX perspective, from a general compliance perspective, is touching integrated files. So again, this was our way of, of coming up with a solution that's integrated. So that was really, again, our approach. I mean, at this point, we'll integrate with everything because I just don't want to do manual work ever again when it comes to this. Other questions? Nick, talk about the um you know, the level of uh, work that you're using, obviously you're using a different time and attendance package, but um, I think you're using largely pretty much all of the SKUs from uh, uh, from Workday, so just share that. Yeah, we, again, we did the Big Bang implementation with recruiting advanced comp, comp, uh, payroll benefits, uh, um, recruiting performance, talent development, um, and we're looking at expanding that as well, right? Our HRIS team is looking at learning, we're looking at bringing in benefits. So um, there's just a, a lot of opportunity, but we already have a pretty sizable footprint there. Um, so really, again, what we're looking at is continuing that sort of one-stop shop approach because right now, you know, again, we're trying to avoid people have to go into a learning system to be able to, to do their learning when you could come into Workday. We're also looking at Workday help at some point down the line to be able to manage employee inquiries and tickets like that. Um, but again, it's all just it's time and effort, and, and you know it, we're it's on our roadmap down the few, down the line. Um, but again, more, more, more in Workday is kind of our, our methodology for our HRS team. Um, I have a question on the integration. Do you does a hundred percent of your data push for every payroll? Do you ever have to template? Do you have like cutoff issues with the PG? process so it, this was an education and a change management component right because what we did was we again people could last minute they could call up their payroll provider and they could say can you key this this uh, compensation change in for us well that's great because it gets you the result you want it's a behavior that we wanted to curb so we have been you know it's been my kind of my personal crusade to be able to educate people on these timelines and and these cutoffs and we do have some stuff that does go on a manual file but those are things that can't live in workday yet and i say yet because i hope it gets there but whether you're talking about a pension fund in the uk or or some statutory benefits that aren't available in 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 malaysia those are the the exceptions those are the things that we aren't putting in the workday integration but I don't see why we can't at some point. That's kind of our, our philosophy, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that, was an, that was another question I had. Um, so you've got like your supers and your like in India, your you know, provident fund things that you can't push on Peachy yet. So we've started capturing them as additional data. Yeah. Um, is that what you do? Is yeah, that, we try to do those as, okay. as recurring items or things like that. And we try to get creative when we can. Um, but again, my, my goal, like in India, is how do we put all the, the, the stat benefits in there so that we aren't doing that, right? Because right. I want, we have a lot, again, I, reporting and dashboards is my goal mm -hmm. in this whole thing. So we're, we're trying to get there with, with countries that aren't, aren't quite there yet, but that's, that's been our, our, you know, kind of our approach mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, as far as even the data capture, not the data push, not the number so much that you would template, but even the, the ID numbers and um, PAN numbers and all that, like where... Are you capturing all of that? So if it's not Workday, then it would reside in, in the Safeguard local gotcha. local team's payroll system. But we can report on that. I mean, the global unity and the reporting there, we can. Um, but again, we we're, as much as possible, try to put it in Workday. So every implementation has its challenges. What would you say was the biggest roadblock and how to do your team and Safeguard move through it together? Um, oof, good question. Um, I think for us, it was the change management, right? Really, it, I can't stress enough how much road shows we would go on to try to sell this situation because again you're taking people from this comfortable controlled environment where they can do what they want with very little accountability to now we're saying you must key it in here you must go through the proper approvals and people would find reasons to say this won't work and so we would just you know i i can't tell you how many times i did this presentation on the value proposition of of safeguard and workday and replicon but to it got to a point where we said look if you can't come up with a real tangible reason as to why not, 
we're going to go forward with this and you're going to learn to live in this environment and we'll give you the benefit of the doubt for a bit, but eventually we're going to start to hold you accountable for using the system and using it the right way. financials did you guys have financials in place when you were we use sap so we all the extent of our financials was taking a gl file from safeguard a uh, global standard gl file into sap so we, we don't still have sap yeah for finance okay. for financials rather yeah all right so we we have a little clock here that tells us that there's 30 seconds left 29 28 27 um but uh you know, want to uh want to express our thanks for uh nick you're talking about his journey. Hopefully you found it informative. Um, if uh, I got to put a plug in for our booth, number 124. So if you get a chance, you know, stop by and we can talk a little bit more in detail about it. But uh, you know, thank you all for, uh, uh, for attending and a big round of applause for Nick. <laughs>